All right, all you cool cats and kittens, I am Josh from Vacuums R Us in Colorado, and today we're going to be working on a SIBO D4. The customer's reported issue is that the power head does not function. The power head doesn't turn on, the rest of the machine does turn on, but the power head does not. So I'm going to run through real quick some troubleshooting steps that we've taken already that has brought us to opening the machine. Um, the issue is actually inside the machine in this swivel neck right here. But I'm going to run you by some troubleshooting steps we took externally first um, that, that you can take before you get that far. Um, because the repair we're doing today is actually uh, relatively unusual. There are other issues that take place first. Uh, I would like to note here, we're working on a SIBO D4 Onyx. This is a unit that has a 10 year warranty. If you are not a service center and you are opening up one of these machines, you are likely voiding your warranty, please stop. Bring it into a service center. Uh, likely the issue will be covered under warranty. It will be repaired at no charge to you. Even if you have a machine that was not in the Onyx collection, they had five year warranties, there's a significant chance that you have a warranty on your unit. So please check into that before you start. And as always, perform this repair at your own risk. I am not liable if you electrocute yourself, if your vacuum becomes sentient and eats your cat. This is an informational video. So first of all, uh, with a SIBO D4, and this is any D4 that has a power head, by the way, there's a bunch of premium D4, different colors, doesn't matter. They're all the same machine internally. The most common thing is going to keep your power head from working is simply uh, the power head having an issue inside of it. They're on the older uh, power heads and on a, over a year old, there's an on off button right here that you push on that turns the power head on and off. Over time, uh, this button starts to stick and you have to push on it a little bit harder. Uh, the resolution of that is to replace this clear button and potentially the housing right here. Uh, it's usually not the power switch or the actuator arm that's inside of there. It's actually just the housing right here and this clear button has a uh, plastic abrasion on it, right? So that plastic abrasion is causing the button uh, to stick. All right, so uh, we've already tested this against a, another hose, power head and wand to verify that the issue is in the canister. But your most common issue when your brush is not spinning is that this button right here is simply sticking is all that's happening. So the other issue that can happen is the wand itself can lose continuity. So these powered heads have electricity. I boggles my mind how I have to explain this, but I'm, I'm going to go ahead and do it. The power head is not run by magic, okay? It's actually electricity, which is close to magic. And the electricity has to get to the power head somewhere. I can't tell you, I, I think nine out of 10 times when I tell an end user or consumer, the reason your power head has failed is because your hose is bad. They say, well, it works fine. Electricity has to get to the power head. It runs through the wand. So you can check continuity on your wand. You have two electrical connections on both ends of it. Sometimes the wires that are inside the wand will fail. And so power isn't getting all the way to the head. That's another thing that's common. And the great thing about this is you can just buy a wand. There's no repair. Just check continuity on that. So the other thing that's really common, so until about a year ago, the hoses on these had an external wire right here. And this wire moves constantly as you're going back and forth, your head swivels. And the wire will eventually break inside and you won't have continuity going from um, the electrical wires that are inside here to this plug here that plugs into your wand. What was great about this design, which is very different than Mila's design, is that this little wire dually bobber right here, it just pops right off. Well, with significant force, it pops right off. Um, and this part right here is like, it's not much. It's like 30 bucks or something like that. It's called a mains cable and you can find it. I'm going to put a link in the bottom to the schematics, the parts books for this whole machine so you can see everything, but it's called the mains cable. And until a year ago, their hoses all had this cable on it and it's like a $30 fix, whatever. You pop this off and you're good to go. So you can check continuity um, between uh, there as well uh, to see if you maybe have a continuity issue with your mains cable. The newer SIBOs, they got rid of this and the, the, the wiring is internal. Um, I haven't seen issues with it yet. I'm pessimistic. Um, SIBO is certainly better than any other company that I've worked with as far as doing stress testing and QA. Ricard is pretty good too though. Um, so the design might be okay, but it makes me nervous. What I liked about this was if your hose failed, if the continuity in your hose failed, it always fails up here. And on these, we just swap this out, no big deal. So those are the most common issues actually to cause your power head to fail. So you can check that stuff. If you know how to check continuity, um, you can look at some of the other videos. I show you how to use a multimeter and you can just Google that. That's not that big of a deal. But we've already verified that none of those issues are the problem. And the actual issue we're going to get in closer here with this unit is the wire that's inside of here. So 
these swivel, right? And so the wires that feed the electricity up to the neck and into the hose and all that, they move back and forth and they can break eventually. Now I will say this machine has the absolute best design I've ever seen for a swivel neck in my entire life, but nothing's perfect. It can still fail. So I'm going to walk you through how to pull this off. Hopefully I'm not going to break the tabs on this. They're very fragile. It's not a bad idea if you're a service center to keep one of these lids in stock because it's really easy to break the tabs on this when you're doing this repair. Um, so it's not a bad idea to do that. Uh, again, if you are a service center, there is a service manual that was done by Lenny prior to his retirement uh, that you can access. I will not be sharing that below. Unfortunately, it is marked for internal use only and for, red, for dealers only. And SIBO is very persnickety uh, about consumers repairing their own machines. So unfortunately, it would risk our dealership to share that document with you, and I cannot do that. But if you are a dealer, you can get it from SIBO. And I'm gonna actually run you through what is done in that document. So I've got a T20 right here, a Torx. Um, if you don't have it, we have these available actually on our site. We have a full Torx bit set that you can buy. I, I don't know what it is, 10, 15 bucks, something like that. But that's a T15 right there. I'm gonna go ahead and take that off. There's two screws that I am going to take off. I'm also going to pull the filter out here real quick. I'm going to pull that out and stick it aside. So I have my T20 right there on that side. Pop that baby out. There we go. And then I have a T20 over here on the other side. Incidentally, this is actually the vacuum cleaner that I own. Not this one. I'm not working on my vacuum, but if that tells you anything. I'm, I'm kind of a fan of this, of this machine. So the lid now, so it's a clamshell. There's two sides. There's the, the front and the back, and it's held on by clips. There's a clip at the three and the nine o'clock position. Um, super tough to get these off. So you'll take one side at a time. So I'm going to pop this bottom out while I pop the clip that's right here off the side. Like that. So I've got that out. I'll pop this one out. All right, so I'm loose in there. And I'm gonna pop out the other side next. And I can actually hear this side came back in, I think. Yes, it did on the bottom, it did. Okay, so now I've got, I keeps popping back in. I've got my two bottom tabs out and then there's the two sides tabs right here. Okay, so now that we've gotten these two tabs up here and down here off, oh, that tab up there went off again. You can hear them. I don't know if my mic's picking it up, but you can hear it. The slightest movement and your tabs start to uh, snap down again. So I'm going to close this so I can come towards the back and I can get my hand underneath it back here. There we go. And so I'm going to be popping this up from back here now. And you can see, I don't know if you can see it on the video very well, but you can see right here, there's kind of a dimple because I have these two clips right here that are holding it in. And those are the clips I'm talking about that break all the time. I got it off, we'll see if I broke it. Ah, I didn't. So these are the clips that I'm talking about right here. Super fragile. If you come at it from the front, you'll break those clips and you'll have to buy a new lid. That was the hard part. The rest of this stuff is easy and the design of this machine is really cool. Now, like I said, we are doing a repair on this today because it's broken, you know? I think the machine is four or five years old, <clears throat> but I'm not mad at it. It's pretty rare we do this repair and you'll see as we get into this, it's a really smart design. So you have a connector over here. Molex connector, we'll unclip, click that. Pull those wires out. We got a couple screws here, four screws that we're gonna pop out. And if I remember correctly, I think all of our screws are the same size. And then this is gonna pop right up for us. Your um, bag sensor is right there. So if you were doing a bag sensor, uh, full sensor repair. That's what you would be uh, accessing as well. There's two washers right here. We'll get those out of the way. All right, and so now we've got that wire. All right, so now that we've got this wire harness out, I'm gonna test continuity on it real quick just to verify that this is the failure point for, for sure, for sure. The problem here is that I may actually test out with good continuity on this and it's still actually bad because what happens on these wire looms when they break internally is, you know, there's there's wire filaments in here, I guess you could say, and maybe there's 
20 or 30 filaments and it bends back and forth over and over again and they break one at a time until the point where they're no longer, they're all broken inside there and we don't have good continuity. But if you move it just right, they'll touch each other, right? So I might get good continuity on my test here, but in actual application, when it's being put into use, I'm not showing continuity. So I'm setting my multimeter to whatever that means, and I'm gonna test and see if I have continuity through here. Test my blue wire. Let's see if I've got to continuity on that, which I'm actually not showing continuity on that. Oh, I was touching the wrong wire. And then I'm gonna go to black. We'll test continuity on black. Good on that. We'll test continuity on white. And we're good on that. So continuity is actually testing out good on this old knuckle. I'm gonna replace it anyway, because as I said, there may be wires broken inside and I moved them around and now I'm getting good continuity. And it is also highly unlikely that it's anything in here or that it's this wire up here. You'll notice I'm actually not replacing this wire. When you get the part, and this is the new part from SIBO, it actually comes with this wire. I don't replace these because I've never actually seen one go bad. So I remove this extra wire and just toss it. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in here and I'm gonna load it. So you've got your tab down here, your wire comes out and your wire is gonna loop around and I put that protection right, right about in there. And so this is gonna allow it to turn that far in that direction and then it locks and then it'll turn that far and approximately in that direction and then lock. It has the, the play to do that. I'll run my wire, I'll plug this back in. This can only plug in one way. There are genders on it. So it can only go one direction. And I'll push my wires back into the wire runs again so that I don't pinch anything when I put it back together. So now that all the wires are back in place, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put this back on. So this has a, a dually bobber here. We need to move this over so that that will hold that thingy in there. Remember that we have these two washers that were up here on top. All right, and now this lid will just snap back on. Again, I'm going to be careful about the snaps up top. Unlikely you'll break those snaps when you're putting it on. It's taking it off that's the problem. So there's little notches here that hook into the, uh, the lever, the closing lever. So you have to come from the front like this, and then we come down carefully. And then I'll pull my tabs right there. My tab right there was already on. These tabs are already on. I'll go ahead and put screws back in the sides. And that is it. We'll put the filters back in, the bags back in, and we're good to go. But that the big piece here is how you get this thing off without breaking them. You come in from the back. In review, we've got two screws. We've got two tabs. The screws actually hold in two tabs as well. So you'll pop these tabs out at the same time. You bring it down, put your hand underneath it, and pop it up. And then you can replace that wire loom that's in there. Yep, and we're moving good. All right, any questions, post the comments below. If I have time, somebody will get those answered for you.